Next, we will explore the important topic of the machine learning life cycle. It is a structured uh, process that turns your raw data into smart real world solution. It is not just about training a model. It is about solving problems. What problems? The business problems, making accurate predictions and uh, continuously improving the system. Let's walk through this journey step by step and see how uh, the data transforms into intelligence. Here is the machine learning life cycle. In this, the problem definition is the first stage. Before we jump into building fancy machine learning models, let's take a step back and ask ourselves, why are we even doing this? This is where the first and most important stage of the machine learning life cycle comes in, which is the problem definition, okay? Now the question is, why is this stage, problem definition stage is important? Can someone tell me why it is important? <clears throat> Let's say you are a doctor. Before you give medicine, you need to diagnose the patient, right? Similarly, in machine learning, before we start working with the data or training a model, we need to clearly understand the problem we are going to solve. Otherwise, we end up building the wrong solution. Okay, so now the question is, what is going to happen? What are we going to do in the problem definition stage? First, understand the business problem. Uh, can, can someone uh, tell me uh, an example for the business problem? Let's say we work for a big retail company and they tell us customers are leaving and we don't know why. Can you help? This is our starting point. What, 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 do, what is the next thing that we do? It? What is the next uh, thing? The key questions to ask is uh, what exactly is the problem? Why customers are leaving? Okay, what is the exact problem for this? One? Okay, uh, customers are churning, uh, you know, maybe due to various reasons and they stop uh, purchasing it from our side. So why is this problem for the business? Why do I have to care about this one? If the customer leaves my business, why should I care about it? Obviously, if the customers leave our business, that can lead to loss in our revenue. Reduced customer loyalty and so on. Okay. So what impact will solving it have? The next question, Incre increase in profit. If I solve this, I'm going to get an increase in profit, better customer retention, and so on. Okay. The another example is imagine you work for an online store like Amazon, and your boss says, we are losing 15% of customers every month. That's a huge problem. If he can predict which customers are likely to leave, the company can offer discounts or special offer to keep them. The next thing, uh, the next thing is uh, the next step is to define the machine learning goal. Okay, we understood uh, you know the what uh, uh, the business problem in this example. We understood customers are leaving. Okay, and what exactly is the problem? Why is this a problem for the business? And impact also we discussed. The next step, what are we going to do to solve this problem? Define the machine learning goal. Okay, so we know our customers are leaving. What exactly do we want our model to do? So our model has to predict if a customer will leave or stay, yes or no. Our model has to predict whether you know the customer is going to leave us or not. Okay, it's a classification problem. Probably along with the classification problem, we can also uh, create a recommendation system which uh, can suggest products to retain customers. The key takeaway here is our goal should be measurable. Instead of saying, I want to improve customer retention, we should say, I want to build a model that can predict customer churn with 85% accuracy. This one will help success, track the success, okay? So once you build and uh, not deploy your model, right? So you should be, uh, you know, at that time, right? Before de you're deploying it, um, you need to measure how will your models um, predict the customer churn? I don't know whether your model is predict the customer churn with 85% or 90% accuracy, then your goal has been met. So you need to 
uh, set the goal very clearly okay you need the, your goal should be measurable that's the point here okay next step is identifying the constraints and requirements now uh, the, you know i have a question to you all can we just collect any data and build a model not really we need to consider a few things first isn't it do we have enough data maybe we only have 3 months of sales data okay what features are useful purchase history maybe compliance and website visits and so on right so what are the ethical con concerns can we use personal data legally for example right if you work for a bank uh, predicting loan defaulters we must be careful not to discriminate based on gender or race these biases can creep into models okay to summarize as part of the problem definition right before uh, even we think about coding or training a model we need to get these things straight so what problem are we solving why does it matter and how do we measure success and what are the challenges okay think of this stage um, as setting the gps before your long journey if you don't define the problem properly you will be lost before even we start okay next we will move on to data collection and exploratory data analysis where we gather the data needed to solve our business problem once you collected the data the next step is eda what is eda eda stands for exploratory data analysis you conduct uh, the exploratory exploratory data analysis so in that case right um, you might tend to find um, the missing values and you can understand the distribution pattern of your data and also right you can find out uh, the pattern something like you know which customers are more likely to leave for what reason they are leaving it for example you collect data from customer orders uh, browsing history customer support and so on you conduct the exploratory data analysis you might uh, get the insights something like right uh, customers who have not purchased in the 60 plus days are more likely to leave your business and also there are some cases uh, for example uh, those who use discounts often have lower retention higher engagement uh, with emails you could see that higher retention as part of exploratory right or data exploratory analysis right you can see this kind of patterns so with this analysis uh, you can understand you know why customers leave and um, what behavior indicate show the next stage is pre processing okay after exploring the data and if you find any duplicate records and if you have any um, missing values you address it so basically what we are doing as part of pre processing is we are cleaning the data so removing the missing values or you know maybe fixing the missing values by performing data imputation removing the duplicate records and standardize the formats for example you want to convert the different date formats to yyy mmdd something like that okay remove uh, some fake uh, or test accounts the clean data ensures that uh, the model uh, learned a meaningful pattern instead of errors and then the next uh, stage is uh, feature engineering what do you mean by feature engineering anybody came across this term yes creating new features new useful features that improve your prediction accuracy give me some examples something like a day since uh, last purchase if this value is higher that means more likely to uh, the more likely that the customers can churn an average order value right so if that value is very less right it indicates churn risk an email engagement score higher the score higher retention the well defined features make it easier for the model to identify churn pattern the next stage is uh, feature selection what do we do as part of feature selection what is the goal of feature selection here we want to keep only the uh, features that are uh, you know import importance to your analysis what, what do you mean by that for example uh, you have customer name and phone number these features are not helpful to predict your outcome variable hence 
you can remove these kind of irrelevant features keep only the top 10 features based on your importance the reducing the unnecessary data what will happen it will speed up your training and improve the accuracy of your model the next stage is model selection training and hyperparameter tuning so in this case we will be experimenting with the different um, or the set of you know the candidate um, machine learning models here what we do is we test um, for example logistic regression random forest and xg boost and we use grid search or bayesian optimization for hyperparameter tuning and then we'll determine of these set of models which model is outperforming in terms of uh, the performance metrics so that is what uh, we do it as part of model evaluation in the case of model evaluation using uh, metrics like uh, accuracy precision and recall we decide uh, which model accuracy is very high and precision is high and recall is high so based on which we'll decide which model we need to deploy it okay so the model uh, that uh, gives the um, higher accuracy so that is the one we'll be deploying it in the production system and obviously right so that is what we will be doing it before we deploy the model uh, we have something called app building and user interface you need to create a user a good user interface this good user interface ensures the business users can uh, can act on the models in size okay so something like you know create a dashboard showing high risk uh, churn customers and send uh, automated retention email IDs to at risk customers something right so by doing by uh, giving a nice dashboard but uh, which shows this kind of information that will be helpful for the business um, owners or the business users to act on it okay and before even we build the you know user interface uh, after you evaluate your model what you do right here we do uh, the other stage is something like explainability interpretability okay understand why the model made a prediction there is a package called SHAP SHAP uh, you know that value is right the sharp value shows that uh, you know for example the days since last purchase in the top factor okay the business teams uh, business teams right they can trust models more when they understand why prediction are made okay uh, the once you find the um, best algorithm or the best um, machine learning model the next stage is you need to deploy in the production system okay so you deploy the model to make real time predictions real time predictions and um, so in this case where the model runs daily to update your churn predictions you interact this with your um, integrate this with your crm to trigger personalized offers also okay basically the deployment ensures our model moves from experiment to impact the other uh, the next stage is monitoring and continuous learning it's not uh, that you, once you deploy your model, your job is over. You need to keep monitoring it. Okay, Try, track your model performance over time. If the accuracy drops um, below 80%, retraining is required. So when, uh, what kind of scenario the accuracy can drop? If the customer behavior shifts, right? For example, uh, any new shopping trends and uh, you need to update the features. Monitoring basically prevents the models from uh, becoming outdated. Okay, It'll keep your model up to date. In case of any uh, drop in the performance right of a model you need to retrain it and you need to redeploy it okay uh, in uh, some cases right the new data they collect it every three months or so and the model is retrained and they conduct the ab test um, uh, for the new version before uh, the full rollout the continuous learning keeps your predictions accurate over time that is the whole idea here okay hope you understood um, the machine learning life cycle is not just about training models. It's about uh, solving business problem, improving continuously and uh, driving real impact. Any questions?